Sup everyone, I'm your female otaku and I'm here to review episode 8 of March Comes In Like a Lion. First things first, that symbolism though. Second thing, sorry about the lawnmower. Third thing, Kyoko needs to go. Yes, with this episode of March Comes In Like a Lion after its one week break, it's back with Kyoko. You don't know how frustrated I was when I saw her. Oh man, because I'm still so mad that she most likely violated Ray. So once I saw her, I dropped everything. I was like, no, 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 no. But of course, she just has to stay over, right? And then she just has to put her hands on Ray and everything. Sure, sure, sure. She wasn't feeling him up or anything. She was just still like, oh, okay, good. My boyfriend didn't leave a scar on your face. Okay, but no, she just had to stay the night. And then first thing in the morning, what does she do? Taunt him. She's just like, oh wow, it's like you're beating an old senile man. And I'm just, I just wanted to, I wanted to strangle her. I really did. You know what she said that she was going to do to her boyfriend if Goto ever hit her? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do to her, okay? I'm going to stab her in her sleep. I'm gonna throw her in the river. That's what, that's what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. Kyoko's gotta go. Okay, sorry about that uh, mini rant. With the beginning of the episode, we go back with Harunobu teaching the girls how to play shogi. And I'm really happy that the rules were explained because I later on found out, you remember the the Nyan Neko Kitty song that, that played? It played in this episode and also played in uh, the, the previous episode. Apparently, the lyrics were about teaching you shogi and they weren't translated. Crunchyroll didn't translate it for us. So I'm really glad in this episode we got to learn and it's a lot like chess. It really is. I always had a feeling that it was like chess, but I noticed that when they were saying the pieces and stuff that they had different names. Some of the pieces had different names, so I was wondering if they had different roles as, as well. But it's overall chess. That's really what it is. So I'm glad that the rules were explained and the fact that, um, you know, even the pieces can level up, or as they say, transform, like the pawn when it goes to the enemy territory, then it transforms and now has the power of gold. <laughs> like, this is great. Harunobu, he published that book. He he whipped something up, got a company to publish it. I was like, Harunobu, you're amazing. I love Harunobu. And then he follows Ray to his apartment and brings in housewarming gifts. <laughs> Harunobu is love. He's absolute love. He's a great dude. And the fact that they, they brought this up again, the Harunobu's commentary during Ray's match, because turns out Ray, he's pretty close to getting demoted. And if he gets demoted twice, then I think he's like, I, I don't think he can come back or something like that. I don't know. Because cause they did mention that this one dude it ha has been getting demoted enough and when after this certain match once he gets demoted then he's like gonna retire and stuff like that. that's it so yeah strict rules i had no idea about that i didn't even think about like ray getting demoted and stuff but it makes sense that you know he, it was mentioned that he's been losing and anyway back with harunobu during his commentary turns out he used up all of his energy and is and and then he was like about to pass out and everything, just like, oh my gosh, Harunobu, Harunobu, my precious boy. He's amazing. He really is. What an amazing friend, honestly. That symbolism, that symbolism at the end of the episode. You see, I was very curious because when they showed us the, the whole thunder symbolism stuff, how with Ray, when he was little, he saw one of the most beautiful things ever. He saw lightning in broad daylight, and then right after that lightning came the rain. And then we saw Kyoko, so I was just so, and then, and then like the episode continued on now. And I was just like, okay, what does that symbolism mean? Why do they show us that? I was trying so hard to think about it, because they're clearly referring to Kyoko as the lightning, but, it, and, and Ray just said that the lightning was the most beautiful thing that he saw since it was in like the middle of the day. So I was trying to figure it out, like what? What is going on here? Why is he comparing her to the most beautiful thing he has ever seen? And then at the end of the episode, he's not trying to reference her as the most beautiful thing he has ever seen, but referencing her as she, she creates a lot of problems. She is the cause of all the rain of the thunder. And I'm just like, 
The symbolism is gold. It's utter gold. I I love this anime. Best best symbolism. Best metaphors. Bravo. <sighs> Kyoko, I was hoping we would never see her again. Uh, like, honestly, throughout the episode, they, they, they did get a little touchy there. You know, like there were a couple of instances where I was afraid that Kyoko was going to attempt something, but she didn't. You know, I, the fact that she wanted to soak in the bath, but she, like she said, she just soaked her feet in, in the bath. She didn't ship down or anything like that. So I was like, okay, okay, I'm still watching you though. And then she's like, oh, can you hand me your shirt? And wanted to stay the night and stuff, but oh, she stayed a certain di distance from him, put on the shirt, went to bed. And then she went close to him, you know, grabbed his face. And I'm just all like, nope, nope, Kyoko, get out, get out, Kyoko, nope. But it was just to see if there was a scar. So I was, I was really paying attention to her. So I was just like, okay, maybe she actually changed. Maybe I should stop being so angry and she's not like that anymore. But nope, that is not the case. Cause then she taunts Ray because he is about to beat a guy who has been demoted so much that he's going to retire after his next loss. <sighs> I hate her. I hate her so much. Kyoko, worst girl of the season. Well, Kari being one of the best girls of the season. Anyway, that was this episode. Let me know your thoughts on it and catch you later as I review Ruby Volume 4. I'm your female otaku, sayonara. <laughs>